This is an Algebra 1 lesson on beginning to use a graphing calculator to uh, find the solution to a system of two equations in two unknowns. Okay, we'll start with the calculator here. We're using a TI-84+, plus, which in our class is the only one that's allowed. Any type of TI-84 is, is, is acceptable. First equations we're going to look at here are right here. We're going to see about solving this system. You'll notice right off that the y is isolated. These happen to be in slope-intercept form, but what's important is that the y is isolated. You can't use the calculator for this purpose unless y is isolated. And that's with the y equals button. So what happens is if you have an equation that the y is not isolated, you can rearrange it algebraically manipulating it until the y is isolated and then you can put it into the calculator. But uh, just be remem just remember, be reminded that um, sometimes many students will make mistakes in isolating the y and uh, that will give you an incorrect answer. So look at your equations before you just automatically go to the calculator and see if it wouldn't be that big of a deal just to solve it as it is. Analyze it before you start. If you want to use the calculator, you will have to isolate y. All of the equations that we're using today, y is isolated. So we'll go to the y equals screen. The button is right here under the window. It looks like this. Notice we have y sub 1, y sub 2, y sub 3 with this little thing we'll talk about later beside it. So the equation y sub 1, 2, 3, recall that a superscript, an exponent, changes the value of the base, the number that it's raised to. A subscript, however, you will recall, does not change the value. It just indicates which one you're talking about. So here you're talking about equation 1, equation 2, equation 3, each of which have the y isolated. So the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 listed here are just saying which equation are you talking about. So, we'll talk about these two equations, and I'm just going to put the first one as first. So, let's talk about entering it into the calculator. We'll put 2x minus 5. 2, and then recall that this, vari this button here has all our variables on it. Uh, it's got x and tau, several variables on it. We're using x. Go ahead and push it. It'll always be x. If you have a different letter, it doesn't matter. You can still use that one and just know that it's the other one. And then use the minus button. That's on the gray buttons on the right. And 5. That's our first equation. Arrow down for the second equation. This is now y sub 2. We'll put in the second one. Now here we get into a battle of the negatives and the, and the minuses. You have to be very careful in noticing that a, neg a, a minus is an operation that separates two terms. A negative is an indication of the sign of a particular number. This one is a negative. You must use the negative button. You'll get an error message if you don't. This is the negative button. This is the minus button, the operation. All of these are operations. This is the negative. If you put the wrong one in the wrong place, it's going to be wrong. It'll be garbage in and garbage out. This is a negative 3x. You need to use the negative button. The previous one, minus 5, was on the operations, the minus. Okay. So what we have here, okay. So it'll be negative 3, that's down by the decimal. Negative 3x plus 2. You'll notice that the uh, calculator puts it up higher like they do in elementary school for the negatives just so it looks different. It is different. And again, the calculator is not too, not too smart. You're smarter than the calculator, but if you don't work the calculator the way the calculator wants to be worked, it won't work. It'll be a mess. Garbage in, garbage out. Okay, now let's graph this. To graph it, we'll hit the graph button which is right here under the screen on the right. Graph. Watch it as it graphs. It'll do the one you said first, we said first, it'll do the one we said number two is second. All right, we want to know the solution to this system. I've got two equations, 
two unknowns, the solution is x marks the spot. We want to know the intersection. So the red equation, the blue equation, where they meet, that one point, we want to know the one point where they meet, that's the solution where both equations are true. So what we'd like is for the calculator to tell us where this point is. And it will tell us, which is very handy. Uh, the way we do it is to ask to calculate the intersection. Calculate is right here. Notice there are two shift keys, the blue one and the green one, second and alpha. Things that are uh, painted in in blue, you use the second blue uh, shift key to get to them. Things that are painted in in green, like F4 here, you use the second uh, use the uh, the shift key alpha to get to that. We want calculate calc, so we'll push second calc. That gives us a selection. Let's see. We wanted to calculate the intersection, so we want intersect. So either push five or arrow down and push enter to five. So I'll push five. Calculator asks me, is this the first curve? If you look here, there's a little blinky on the intersection of the one that we named y sub 1. So it's asking us, is this the one you're talking about? We say, yes, indeed. That's why I typed it that way. That's the one I want. So I hit enter to say, yes, that's the curve that I want first. Then it says, is this the one you want second? There's a little blinky there on the intersection of the one we called y sub 2 and the uh, y-axis and saying, is this the one you want? Yep, that's the one I want. So I'll hit enter because yes, it's what I want. It now asks me with, if I want to guess. I don't know why it asks me if I want to guess. I don't want to guess. Have calculator. The reason I have you is because I don't want to. Would you please just tell me? And it does if you hit enter. Okay. So the intersection of these two lines, the solution to the systems of equations is the point x equals uh, 1.4, y equals negative 2.2. So the solution written as a point is 1.4, negative 2.2. Let's do another one. We'll go to y equals, and at y equals, you're going to need to clear them out. So hit clear, right there under the arrow button, arrow down, hit clear again. Our next problem will be here. We're going to enter it in here. Again, y sub 1 just means the first equation. y sub 2 just means the second equation. So, now, fractions. Hmm. Fractions. Sometimes when you do a fraction, it doesn't do the way you want it to on the calculator. So I recommend as you're beginning fractions in calculators and working with them and beginning to learn, to put your fraction in parentheses. Does it always have to be? No, it doesn't. But sometimes it does, and you may not have a good enough sense yet as to when that is. So for safety's sake, go ahead and put it in, um, in parentheses. So 4 thirds x plus 4. That's going to be my first equation. My second one also has a fraction. I'll show you another way to make a fraction. If you want the fraction to look like a fraction, what you can do is uh, choose that option by going to the green alpha um, shift key. Hit alpha y equals. It'll pull up a menu. On this menu, the first one is ND for numerator denominator. It'll give you a fraction. This is U for units or whole numbers. ND, it'll give you a mixed number. Um, this one will switch between a mixed number and a fraction. And this one will switch between a fraction and a decimal. Well, we just want a fraction, so I'm just going to hit enter. It's on 1, ND, a numerator and denominator. So I'll hit enter. And it puts in a fraction that looks like a fraction. So I can do 4, arrow down, and hit 3. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing the, the second problem. Okay. 
So I'll do uh, negative 2, arrow down, and 3. Okay, as I'm doing this, notice that um, my the blinky is still in the denominator. It's still in the denominator. If I keep typing here, whatever I type will be in the denominator. Because again, the calculator doesn't know you're done writing a fraction. You have to do it the way it wants. So you need to arrow out of the fraction. And now I can put x minus 5 using the minus key. Graph it. Watch it as it graphs. Find the solution to the equations by going second calc. 5 for intersect. I don't want to guess. And it tells me that the intersection is at the point negative 4.5, negative 2. So we'll do the next one. Go back to the y equals screen and clear out your, your equations. Hit clear, arrow, hit clear. So we'll put these two in. This is going to be, and I'm just going to do it, well here I'll do one each way. 3 halves x plus 3. And then I'll write it as a fraction. It looks like a fraction. 3 halves. Remember to arrow out of my fraction and put x minus 1. When I graph these, I'm going to watch and see what they look like. Oh, they look kind of parallel to me. Hmm have the same slope at a different intercept. I bet they're parallel. Okay, well let's do the uh, com uh, calculator calculation and see. So that second calc, I want to intersect. That's 5. I don't want to guess. And the answer is there's an error because there's no sign change. And that's asking me to quit, which I'll do. Okay, now I need to interpret what that means. It means there was no intersection. There was no intersection. It means the lines are parallel. So what you should say as your answer is that the lines are parallel. Okay, one more. So we'll go back to the y equals screen. Clear out our equations. and enter them in. Okay, the first one, y sub 1, will be uh, 2 fifths x minus 3 minus x plus 5. Notice that when you type too long, it's going to come back over there. Okay, so then we go to the next equation. I will put it in fraction form. It'll be negative 3, and you can put the negative on the numerator or the denominator, divided by 5, 3 fifths, arrow out of my fraction, x plus 2. Let's graph that. Now, watch it when it graphs. Watch it when it graphs. Well, look at there. It's the same line. Does everybody see it's the same line? Let's go back to look at this and see if we'd simplified it. We can tell that it's the same line. 2 fifths x minus x is negative 3 fifths x. And 5 minus 3 is plus 2 they were the same equation. So what we should put here is that it's the same line or that there are an infinite number of solutions.
both of those are correct, we typically say infinite number of solutions in algebra, and we tend to say same line in geometry, but they're both true either way. So here's some problems for you to work. I will attach this to the website. Go ahead and work each one of them, and I'll put the solutions up. So pause it now so you don't see the answers. Uh, this is to be pasted into your cipher and work them. Okay, pause now. Okay, Here's the answers. And here endeth the lesson.